for i resolved to know nothing while i was with you except jesus christ and him crucified for i resolved to know nothing while i was with you except jesus christ and him crucified let's bow our heads in prayer as we sing a chorus he is lord and he is lord Father, we come to you this morning with hearts full of praises and thanksgiving for the wonderful cross of Jesus Christ through which you revealed yourself unto us. Lord, we pray that our meditation this morning would bring joy to our hearts and glory to your name. And we pray that the cross of Jesus Christ might be lifted up once again with all its power and glory in the midst of us. Be with each one of us. And Lord, we pray for those who are on their way to come and join us. And also, Lord, we commit those who are watching us from online, wherever we are, we pray that we would be gripped by your wonderful and beautiful presence and Lord that we might lose ourselves in the wondrous love that you have showered upon us on the cross of Calvary. Be with us and lead us through Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior we humbly pray. Amen. Let's all stand to sing Hymn number 435 from the hymnal. It will also come up on the screen. When I survey the wondrous cross.
opportunity for us to gather on this day to worship this triune God who revealed himself through the cross and through his son dying upon the cross and I believe this is the fittest day to express our faith in this risen Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. He was the Creator, He was the Savior, and He would be the coming Judge. So in the words of the Apostles' Creed, let us unite ourselves in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. 
From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us all turn in our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53 for our responsive reading. Isaiah chapter 53, the entire chapter. I know we have different uh, versions, but never mind. The content is more important than the language, whichever language that you have in your hand, either Tamil or Hindi. Let's follow. I read verse 1 and you read verse 2. Who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. He was oppressed and afflicted. Yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before a shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied by his knowledge. My righteous servant will justify many and he will bear their iniquities.
please be seated. Dear friends, we are here in the sanctuary of God this morning to meditate upon the amazing love that he had shown to us, to the entire world on the cross of Calvary. If at all, if at all there is, there is one subject that we don't understand completely, from the Bible, what would be, what would be that subject? It is the subject of the cross. Even though it is the foundation for our faith and practice, we don't understand completely. Of course, I. don't understand why, why the cross? It is a subject that was talked about all these 2000 years. It's the subject that it was discussed and debated. And to many it was even discarded. But Till today, that is the subject that is still alive. What is that? It is the cross of Jesus Christ. An amazing event that took place in history and even they tried and still trying to remove the historical traces of crucifixion. They only say it is only a fiction. But that is the power of God. The very fact that we are gathered here this morning is the evidence and it is the proof that by which we live, we move and we have our being. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I read it in the beginning. First Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. And that is the subject that we are all gathered here to meditate upon. We learn a little more, a little, a bit more every time we come together and to 
meditate upon this wonderful subject. And what is the second reason? It is to thank Him. Entire of our life will not be sufficient to thank Him and appreciate Him for His wonderful sacrifice that He made on our behalf. And friends, the Word of God is full of those truths. And in 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 20, it says, The crucifixion was planned even before the foundation of the world. What a mind boggling truth. We only say the Romans executed in the early first century. Romans were the rulers. Annas and Caiaphas, they were the instruments. The Bible says, no, even before even before the foundation of the world, I planned. I planned about the cross. So, this morning, with hearts full of praises and thanksgiving, we worship a God who plans everything well, well ahead even before the mankind would fall into sin, he planned a way of salvation and reconciliation. And we are here to celebrate. Of course, as we sang a few moments ago, the sorrow and love mingling down. Yes, as we sit and worship this morning, we also have the same feeling. Sorrowful, why? It is because of me. My Savior had to die. I am rejoicing. I am celebrating. What? On Good Friday? Yes, we are celebrating the goodness, the greatness, the love of God. So we have these both emotions troubling our souls this morning. So, with those words of introduction, let's go on into further meditation of the cross, bringing by our dear brother, Reverend Sasi Kumar, a little later. And now, we'll have our MOF uh, girls to sing a special number to glorify God. Yes. 
soul has ever seen is the lamp of God on Calvary. Blazing stars that reach me from distant galaxies, the oceans they are speaking, magnificent so deep. Thank you. There is nothing wrong on Good Friday to clap to thank them. Thank you, girls. You did a wonderful job. Now we have the scripture lesson read to us. I think no one is assigned. If you have your Bibles, kindly open to the gospel according to St. Luke. Chapter 23, beginning at verse 39 till 43. Someone can come forward and read it, please. Luke 23, 38 to 43 to 42 One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Are you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God? He said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished justly for forgetting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. 
Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Here ends the lesson. Thank you, Ravi. We have many uh, guests with us this morning and uh, uh, we have a special guest uh, to bring God's word and uh, he is none other than Reverend Sasi Kumar from the Karunya University. We all heard only about Karunya University of Technology and uh, they have recently opened a department. It's uh, Karunya University uh, Theology, Institute of Theology. And our dear pastor, Reverend Sasi Kumar, is the uh, professor and head of the department and the dean of student affairs. Uh, he is consented to be with us this morning to come and share God's word with us on on of your behalf let me uh, welcome him to the pulpit and he would come and speak whatever the lord has laid upon his heart for us this morning yes. yeah. Very good morning to all of you. I greet you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In fact, I am really blessed to be part of this wonderful gathering. I am very much thankful to Reverend Nana Shekhar Aya. I've been, you know, in a, I always I heard his voice and I met him. I feel like he's a fatherly figure. As I arrived and I had a very good reception, giving, taking care of me very well. I really enjoy your presence here. And I am also thankful to uh, Dr. Vassan and family and Sister Rupa and Ravi and Malaka and a lot of host of others. Now I became part of this church family. So thankful to God. Many years ago, there was a young man named Andrew Thomas was caught in a robbery. It happened in Hungary. And he was 20 years old. And he was put behind the bar for almost 50 years. And the government has changed, but nobody was there to you know, take him in bail. He was in confusion. And he has gone, and in fact he has uh, forgotten his own dialect, and the country tried to bring him back. So after 20 years, sorry, 50 years, they said, release him. They sent two brothers to talk to him, they could not diagnose what his dialect was. This, they thought, you know, he's just insane. And finally, they brought people, those who were expert in linguistics, they said, no, he is sound, he has no problem. He is not outside. He was inside the bar for years, and his life and psychological uh, atmosphere has changed, he's like that. So finally they thought we will release him. They asked him, do you have a desire? He said, can you bring a mirror? I could not see the mirror for 50 years. As a young, vibrant man went inside the bar, now it is 70 years. As soon as he saw the mirror, he started sobbing and weeping and crying. Friends, 
only this mirror can tell us who we are truly this mirror has a greater power to expose our light in this morning i would like to talk to you about a title theology through the lens of redemption now the scripture portion we have read just now talks much about you know good friday we celebrate there we see a robber now before we get into we know that it is written by st luke the scholars say it is written about ad 80 to 90 one of the significance you would see in st luke's gospel only here we talk about the prodigal son lazarus and the rich man and out of 35 parables 19 of them are mentioned here this book covers much of christology about christ coming back to this robber he was in the margin of his life now something amazing happened with the help of christ he has rewritten his history for eternity is it possible that someone term as a robber or sinner as a from the community turn to be a saint very difficult but god changes life in fact christ changes life eternally for ever when you study theology you no know, theology stems from two greek words theos and logos theos is god logos is study or reason anselm used to say theology is faith seeking understanding in in fact the, the, the term theology originated from the platonic idea It talks about uh, theories or doctrines of god he puts it gods in because the greek greek philosophy and greek they had the pantheon of gods the doctrines about god and again when you study the scholarly view on uh, theology you would understand a uh, tosser would say the understanding we have about god is all very much important because that influences your theology that shapes your lifestyle that is the key that in which you live and move around now how do i say this robber is a great theologian we all have a theology we worship a god we serve a god we all each one of us contain a theological pursuit it it's not you need to go to a theological st- college and university and study and get a degree to become a theologian and aw tosser puts it that our theology our understanding about god shapes our lives now this robert had five branches of theology discussed in this five or six verse mention so just for our understanding you see in st luke chapter 23 verse 40 he says but the other criminal rebuked him he raised a question don't you fear god the first question tells me that he is a great theologian he says don't you fear god so it is basil boskel he said each human being there is a god shaped emptiness only god can satisfy it we can go around have soft drinks or cold drinks whatever and until and unless you take a glass of water doesn't quench your thirst we move around the world and there are so many things can give you certain sort of or feelings of satisfaction but only the true satisfaction can be gained in god that's why we are created in the language of saint augustine we are you know with instinct we, we we have a tendency to reach out to god talk to god and we have a hunger to walk with god 
the understanding he had the robber had about god is don't you fear god he is having a theology proper you know in you study systematic theology a lot of branches the first thing he had is theology proper he has he underlines if you fear god you know god j a packer in his book knowing god writes we know about god most of the times you know we all of us having a picture about god we experience god in different forms but it has to be cross checked through the scripture that's the reason dl moody said i believe in the inspiration of the word of god because it inspires me when i read it this robert had a theology which is theology proper we know god he is asking the fellow robber don't you fear god when we say that we know god that that's the reason andrew murray said the great lack in our religion today is we do not know god my professor used to tell me that you know sasi we cannot understand god fully and again he would come down and say this peanut brain cannot comprehend god fully this worm eaten faculties cannot understand god fully but this god is knowable the man hanging on the cross along with jesus gets the glimpse of god through jesus and he has an understanding that you know if you think if you say that you know god you fear god and he tells we need to be god conscious bro stanley used to say today people are silver conscious not god conscious not soul conscious even the robber gives a theology that if you know god you fear god you keep god in the center of your life you are aware about the presence of god last time i told you about brother lawrence a cook in the monastery he was not a great theologian he is a cook sitting in the monastery cutting vegetable washing clothes and you know cleaning the room and uh, all those things he doing very 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 clearly and he wrote a book practice of the presence of god he says when i wash my clothes when i cut vegetables when i walk to market to buy things i know that god is with me and this is what which tells us that god is an awesome concept even science say that there is something called god particle see our children go to school if our children are weak in maths or physics we send them to tuition we say that you know they should know more about the subject they should have a very good comprehensive idea about what is all about all einstein e z m square all the ideas but have you ever do you ever send your son or daughter to a pastor or somebody saying my son my daughter is so weak in theology he doesn't understand anything about god he has no connection with god do we send that's why someone said you know we like god we don't love god we like him we like his presence we enjoy his presence we like his blessings but do we love god this robbers you know he's asking a question don't you fear god that is the key that you know god the second thing you would see and he talks about um, sin okay see there again he said we are punished justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve and he talks about hamartiology sin now many times we talk about sin like the result of sin now in fact sin is 
being independent independent of god when adam moved away from god and the devil have given suggestion to become himself his own he became a god for himself that is the understanding now this robert says i deserve or we deserve punishment sin is something serious sin contaminates our life sin devours our lives sin wanted to capture all your being and leads you astray from god but this thief tells the neighbor you know we deserve punishment we require a punishment and this is the best understanding in pauline writings that you would understand that you know paul says there is no confidence in the flesh there is nothing good dwells in me that is the key and this man has an amazing understanding about god it is a self realization see if we read in book of isaiah chapter 6 when isaiah saw god he was really you know having a self realization he said oh unto me and he was a prophet for nations mostly he was condemning when he had a vision about yahweh when he had an encounter with god he says oh i am i'm an unclean man i i live among people with unclean lips you see the same experience peter heard in luke chapter 5 there was a you know great catch of fish peter said jesus leave me i am a sinful man you see in acts chapter 9 when a great pharisee met with jesus he said lord i am wrong this is what happens when you know god you are conscious about your own sinfulness your own failures your own weaknesses you understand that you can do nothing now the greatest theology that you would understand is that you know with god, without god we cannot without us god will not and this man realizes that i deserve punishment i am worthy to be you know hang on the cross and this is what our life must be changed when you know that there is no or nothing good lives in the flesh and this thief had such a realization he said i deserve the punishment there is a king named uh, william grounall from hungary one day he was restless very tired and he sent a message to his brother i feel like i am away from christ i need some solution can you help me he just laughed at him so the king grounall went to his home and asked a trumpet man to go and blow trumpet in his brother's house no in those days if a trumpet is blown the sign is that whose home it is blown he will be hanged and this man who he he doesn't understand exactly what happened and he was after his brother the king ronwal and he said i am sorry king ronwal told him you are so afraid of this fragile human being having just a life no we can who would be able to take a life on this earth are you not aware about god almighty who is our judge who can punish us eternally are you not aware about his presence if you are not right with god please get it right right now that has changed his life again the first i said this robber was a theologian who understand god who knows about you no know, hamartiology sin and moving further he knows christology he has an idea about christ he says you know we are punishable but this man who did not do anything wrong how come this robber get an idea 
See, people have different view about Christ even today. When Jesus was on this earth, Jesus asked the disciples, whom do you think I am? And they said, you know, people say, you are Elijah, you are a prophet, you are a rabbi. And St. Peter said, you are the son of the living God. This is a revelation, you know. See, we can go through the scripture. And somebody said, it is not we go through the word of God. The word of God also should go through us. Someone prayed like this, Lord, I am not worthy to interpret your word. Let your word interpret my life. And this man, having an encounter with Jesus for a few hours, got a clear picture about who Jesus was. He got a good idea, a better idea about Christology. What, when you think about Christ, what do we reflect on? What comes to your mind? And this man has slowly become part of God's kingdom. You know, he, he has got into fellowship with Jesus. He has a very good understanding about Christ. The society said, you are a criminal. They have blamed him. There is no chance for him. But he met Jesus and he understand who Christ was all about. And this message really changes our life. Paul had a theology about Yahweh. And he was a Pharisee. He was well versed in law. And one day he met Jesus and his life got transformed forever. That's the reason Leonard used to say, Paul was a man God intoxicated. Paul was a man captured by God. In, in, in the writings of Raymond Panikar, a Catholic theologian, he used to say, a true believer is not the one who possesses the truth, but possessed by the truth. A God-controlled life. He was hanging as a thief, a robber, but his heart was captivated by the love of Christ. He has moved eternally. He has changed. You know, his citizenship from hell, he has moved to heaven. Something amazing happens. This man knew who Christ is all about more than all theologians put together, I would say. And finally, this man had a Christology. In Christology, C.S. Lewis used to say, if Christ is not Lord of all, he is not God at all. And he knows God, he knows sin, and he knows Christ, and he also knows eschatology. He prays, Lord, when you come to your kingdom, Remember me. How does he know that Jesus is a king? Maybe Pilate put a caption, no? He is the king of Jews. He assumed from that. And he saw that someone who is praying for, who constantly hurt them. Someone who is pleading to the father, who constantly throws stones at them. And he saw the heart of Jesus. He says, remember me when you come to your kingdom. Now, when you see the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven in the Gospels, the kingdom of God is the rule of God. When I am a citizen of this country, I must abide by the rules and regulations of this nation. So also, you see, the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives ethics of the kingdom. This man does not know all those, maybe, but he is asking. He is aware about he is conscious about, he is telling that, you know, Jesus, I understand. See, other translation says, Lord, remember me. He's using the Lord. In, in, in the Jewish understanding, you never use God as your father. Or it's always used Adonai. He's asking, Lord, remember me, Lord. Is pleading to the Father. I mean, pleading to Christ and asking, remember me when you are in your kingdom. 
he got an assurance that you know christ will come back just a few hours the interaction with jesus has changed his life few years ago i was um, watching a debate and uh, the debate was that the famed musician air rahman was giving an interview there are a lot of questions they were asking and finally that man ashok varshini asked him a question is there any one you wanted to see now this is the final option is given to you before you die you want to see any one air rahman said i want to see isa nabi because in their scripture it is said he will come back again you know when 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 somebody ask you what is your final desire what what do, do you want to see in i i was thinking about myself you know will i say the same answer am i living with such a consciousness that christ will come back again i am accountable to christ in future i will become part of the kingdom jesus is going to establish and then this robber at the theology that is talking about the futuristic view you know in in, in tamil st paul says immaikaga mathram nam kristuvai pinbatrukiravarlanal mattella manidarai paarkalilum paridavikkapattavarlairu why do we follow christ what is the purpose behind you what motivates you that you follow christ and finally this uh, robber he asked christ you know remember me we need to underline the term me this he talks about soteriology salvation salvation is not that if my father believes i get it no he is very confident he said remember me lord you know uh, nowadays pastors they don't preach the concept of repentance it's rare to hear in the churches calling for true repentance then i i take classes on this is it in, in the greek you know three terms are used metalomoi changing your mind metanoia changing your activities metanoia change your whole focus you turn to christ completely and he says lord remember me lord see today hundreds and hundreds turn to christianity but not to christ do not turn to religion religion cannot save us turn to christ christ is the solution and this man ask christ lord remember me lord you know something special in christianity that leonard i was reading leonard he said god can look into the unholy world pick up an unholy pick up an unholy man make him clean and keeping back in unholy world and keeping clean rest of his life that is true christianity christ does for all of us even today we must turn to him personally we must have a god experience see rudolf alto used to say he calls it new minus experience when you have an encounter with christ your life changes life got transformed you're being moved and dr people billy graham one of his uh, sermons he said one day one bishop came to me and told billy i have no hope of eternity i lost it can you help me dr billy called him and said you know it's the blood of christ jesus who shed his blood which cleanses you that's what i can tell he left him and after one hour he came back and i said bishop was in tears and said 
now i got it that christ died for me friends that eternal life that we can never buy it we can never pay anything it is completely free in the language of dietrich bonhoeffer in his book cost of discipleship it is free but it is very costly is cost god his own son and this thief got it all theology together hanging on the cross this morning i just want to cross check all of us our theology our understanding about sin our understanding about the future and our understanding about our personal salvation may the lord continue to speak to us thank you thank you brother sasi kumar for bringing a beautiful message on the conversion of the repentant thief yeah as you rightly said even while he was hanging on the cross he spoke theology not only that he spoke theology that also he spoke eschatology now these are all theological terms just to impress you all he not lived for that very moment he lived and he expected that there would be a life afterwards there was no need for that thief that was hanging upon the cross to think about his future but the blessed holy spirit led him to think about all these things about the study of god who god is and he know just before his eyes the sorrow and love flowing mingle down changed his heart and he concluded and he offered a prayer a fitting prayer lord relieve me of my pain take care of my family i am leaving my wife and children behind he did not do that he prayed remember me my soul when you come when you return with glory and power what kind of a revelation did he have how was it possible it is the work of the holy spirit so thank you pastor for bringing those wonderful thoughts that is a still reminder and that we will not have the same opportunity that once the repentant thief had he came to the lord at 11:59 we may not know whether we will be there to see 11:59 so this is the time this is the opportunity to come and to experience his wonderful love in our souls so with that in our hearts let's all stand to sing uh, the be- beautiful hymn jesus keep me near the cross as we sing this hymn the special offer tree will be received with the cover self denial offer tree cover has been already distributed to you if you want uh, uh, some more covers it's it's there at the back 
you can take and use them and this is meant for our church development we have many things to do and as the lord leads we will use it for the church development one for we are planning to build an additional room in the panangadi parsonage and uh, this will go towards meeting those needs so kindly give generously you will come forward and drop your cover and then later on we will have the general offertory people will be coming to you when collecting this is a special cover of a tree that you want to participate in shall we all rise to sing hymn number 433 jesus keep me near the cross
seated. Now is the time we bring all of our prayers and petitions unto our God. The Bible says in Romans that even that he did not withhold. Let me read that verse. Where is that? In Romans 828 and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose Romans 8 and verse 32 he who did not spare his own son but gave him up for us all how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? That's the promise of the cross. He who did not spare his own son. We have many needs, friends, this morning. Let's bring all of them at the foot of the cross. From the cross he met many needs of those who were standing around. He offered forgiveness of sins. They did not want it. Nobody expected it. But he willingly offered the forgiveness of sin. He offered paradise to the re repentant sinner. He offered a home for his own mother. And he offered a ministry to his beloved disciple, John. And finally, he offered up himself unto God. He said, all my tasks were over. So, friends... As we go to God in prayer for next few minutes, let's bring all of our prayers and petitions unto him. He is ready. He is always willing. And he is more than willing to offer if it is according to his will. Shall we just go to God in prayer for a few minutes? Almighty God, our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for giving us all that you were and all that you are to us. You did not withhold even the last drop of blood and even the water that was there in your body. It was all of grace at this time. We plead, we plead with you that our souls be cleansed of every sin, that we might confess and go out from this place that he is the Lord, he is the Lord of my life.
And Lord, as you promised, the one who did not spare his own beloved son, when he went up to that extent, will you not, will he not offer all that you pray for? Let's pray for our loved ones, our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our relatives, that they may also be found there in paradise. Let's pray for their well-being of their souls. If someone is ailing, feeling sick in his or her body this very morning, claim healing from your Savior. With my stripes, you are healed. That's the promise. Let's pray for those who are still ailing. We pray for Mrs. Premalata Moses. Let's pray for pray for Mrs. Premalata Kennedy. Let's pray for Bonsing's brother who was who has underwent a brain surgery yesterday and many who are still because of our old age claim healing Lord let your blood heal me Lord we pray for Mrs. Washington who is suffering from her eye problems Lord, we pray that you will touch all these of your ailing children, Lord. We pray for Robert Ramakrishnan, who you have already once touched. Let him be healed completely. Gracious Master, we pray, as we go out from this place, may we go out tiptoe rejoicing. We commend all our children and grandchildren who are not here, Lord, in distant countries, in faraway places, as the conditions and the situations were changing day after day. We pray that you will protect your children wherever they are. We pray for those who are about to get married. Lord, be with them. Be with both the spouses. Prepare them for this great event that is to come. We pray for those who are waiting for a baby to have. Lord, we pray that you will Open the wounds because you are the creator God. Gracious Master, we pray for those young people who have just finished their high schools and colleges and as they are waiting for a new door to open, Lord, grant them your grace. Open the door that no man can ever shut it. Lord, we pray that you will bless all the senior citizens. Bless us, Lord. We pray for our outreach churches right from Panangadi till Kursadi Mith in Kodakanal, in Dindukal, in Tamari Padi, we remember Salayur, Nal Road. 
We pray for all the district churches. And gracious master, we pray that the churches, including the mother church here at St. John's, there will be a revival. There will be a transformation brought. And Lord, we pray that this day would be a blessed day for all of us. And we want to give you thank you, Jesus. And we want to sing thank you, Jesus, for having heard our prayers. And we will offer our thanksgiving unto the Lord. Shall we sing thank you, Jesus? all join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And uh, just uh, one or two announcements. We want to recognize the presence of uh, other guests with us this morning. We want to, uh, we already welcomed Mr. Ajay Lal uh, from the uh, Methodist Church in uh, UP. Uh, he uh, now brought his wife Swapna and uh, their son Nathan. They are just uh, touring around Madurai and uh, with the help of Google, uh, they found uh, that there is a Methodist church here and last night uh, he came and inquired and uh, uh, this morning they are here as a family. They will be leaving Madurai tomorrow. Yeah, God be with you. We will continue to have fellowship. God bless you. And also we have uh, uh, Linda's uh, husband and uh, Pradeep, is it? And Lydia, both of them are uh, here. Uh, so we want to welcome them, the little one. This uh, brought it uh, both. Yeah, why, not, why don't you both come to the front? We'll have a word of prayer. Come. Both Linda and Lydia. And then uh, who else is uh, uh, Priya's mother is here. Uh, we want to welcome auntie. 
Who else is there? Ah, yes. Uh, 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 Rollins' auntie is uh, here with us after a very long time. Yeah, thank you for joining us. God bless you. Uh, please come, uh, Linda and Lydia. Yeah. Okay. Shall we just pause for a moment of prayer? Lord, we thank you for all of your grace and mercy. We don't have words to express our feelings for you this morning. We pray for both of Lydia and Linda. And Lord, you have given them babies and as they nurture them, we pray for your extra measure of grace, mercy, and guidance upon them to bring up these children in the ways of the Lord. We pray for their spouses, Lord, as they, together as a family, as they continue to serve you wherever they are placed. We pray that you will bless them. We also pray for Rajkumar and Beulah and grant them your grace and physical strength to travel around and be of a great blessing to their children and grandchildren. We give you all the glory and honor and we offer this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Just uh, one or two announcements. Uh, we have our uh, Tamil service conducted here at uh, 11.30. Uh, Reverend Sasi Kumar will be 11.30. Uh, Reverend Sasi Kumar will be with us to share God's word. And again tomorrow at 10.30 we have organized a special seminar titled The Cross and Our Families. How we can bring the truths about the cross into our family relationships. So uh, Brother uh, Sasi Kumar will be leading the discussions and uh, there will be an open question and answer session. We want, the one condition is that you should come with your spouse, both husband and wife, you are uh, invited. Give your names uh, this morning to uh, Brother uh, uh, Vasant Kumar and uh, this is in order to facilitate lunch for tomorrow afternoon. So keep this date. And tomorrow evening, tomorrow evening at 6.30, we have a special meeting here in our church. And uh, Reverend Sasi Kumar will be the speaker. And on Easter day, the first service will be at 4.30 in the morning. 4.30 in the morning. And the second service will be at 9.30. And again, on Sunday evening, we have a Easter evening service. It's conducted as a special song service. If you wish to sing as uh, individuals or uh, families or as groups you are most welcome kindly give your names to Mr. Bon Singh. These are the announcements kindly uh, follow the timing. Have I missed out anything Rupa? Yeah yeah after uh, after the service when you go out hot or cold? Hot hot uh, buttermilk is being served. Our young people, they are preparing it very, uh, yeah. So uh, please have a cup of buttermilk and uh, you can go home. Now we will close this service with hallelujahs.
not with a sad note we go out into the world with singing hallelujahs that we worship a living savior the strife is over the battle is done hallelujah so every after every stanza we will sing hallelujah and as we sing this hymn the offertory the regular offertory will be received go forth from here into this harsh world sin sick and death bound world but not as victims but as victors we go into this dark and the dying world we will bring life and lord we will be the agents of victory and give us that strength 
to live for you and to sing for you. And now send us forth from here with your blessings and benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, the fellowship and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with all of us, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 To God the only one.